Hey, good morning and welcome to the 5 a.m. Master Scrum Show. Hope you're doing well. I'm on a remote location. Actually, doing work for my parents' house. Getting a little older and they need some help. So I'm out here visiting today to go do some work. And Eddie's got some baseball camp he's doing. So I'll talk about that tomorrow. Anyway, hey, good morning. It's 5 a.m. Master Scrum Show. I am Greg Master Scrum Master and I was your coach. Today I want to talk about don't put all your metrics at the same time when you start implementing a scrum team or coaching a team or something like that. Work them in. I'm going to explain why. And it was something I did when I was teaching the kids this year, how I brought metrics and brought things in gradually, depending on where they were and how they were doing and what I thought could help them. So I want to go through that today. And I hope you're doing well. It is a beautiful day out here. I figured I'd go outside before all the bugs came out and enjoy some of the weather. So my virtual background is actually a real background. Uh, the Eddie and uh, Harmony, my uh, parents' dog, were out here playing ball. He was going, yeah, we'll do a live action background. But then they all quit and went back in already. They gave up. So anyway. Here on the 5 a.m. Master Scrum Show, we talk about Scrum and Agile in a very practical and tactical way so you can bring more value to your customers, not work so hard to bring that value to customers, and have a little fun along the way. And here I want to talk about getting teams started in Scrum a little bit, adding metrics. This is a Metric Monday. We haven't done a Metric Monday in so long, uh, mostly because I've been teaching on Mondays and it just didn't quite work out. And to be honest with you, I hate recording the videos and posting it because there's so much work related with that. I'd rather do videos live or not do them um, and put them out because it's so less work. Anyway, so what's the idea? Why not, you know, put every metric, all your Kanban metrics, all your Scrum metrics, and just dump them on a team at once and start measuring. Well, first off, your data is going to be useless. So you're going to put all this metrics in. Until you actually have data, the metrics don't tell you anything. And they can give you a false sense of hope or even worse, um, worse data and just corrupt your data later on. And your team's not ready for it. So we're going to go through that. Later. So you got a new team setting up. What metrics do you do? I would say for the first sprint or two, no metrics, to be honest with you, because what you're really trying to do is install some habits, getting them used to whatever framework you're wor working in, whether it be Kanban or Scrum or, or something, and getting them in the habit of how it works and everything. They're learning about that work, learning to work together. I'm more worried about them learning to work together than what metrics the team has. There's going to be a lot of managers out there. Well, I need to meet, I need metrics right away, and I, I need to know exactly what's going on. You're not going to get that for the first sprint or two, and you really need to stay strong in that. And I apologize if our signal comes in and out because I am doing wireless versus hard coded wired in this because I'm outside. But it's such a beautiful day; I had to come out. So you know you're going to get those manners. You have to stay strong. You have to defend the team, and you have to advise. Um, the managers, even beforehand, I would say during the sprint, even before you start sprinting, what it's going to be like. Here's what it's going to be like, and here's the intro. One, they're going to be learning everything, how to work as a team, first sprint or two. After the first sprint or two, then you start talking about, like, how many issues or how many items do they work during the sprint. And you can start gradually capturing that information. Plus, like I said, you'll have the first sprint's worth of data, which will be wrong, and it really won't be associated, but it'll give you an idea where to go from. Because then you can say, hey, you did 20 issues or something last sprint. You want to go for 20 next sprint? And it just says, you know, that's a cap. They think they could do more, they do more. Um, you put 20 in, they do 30, great. They do 10, they're still working on the storming phase and how to work together and what this whole thing's about. It's okay. It won't be into the third, fourth sprint that you really start looking at metrics. Now, so one of the metrics is how many items you get done. Great. Let's do that. After a couple sprints, you might start doing sizing of effort. Some people don't like sizing. They don't like points. They don't have, they don't like any of that stuff. In the end, it will help, I think, teams get a better idea of what they're doing. People misinterpret it all the time, right? 
well, seven points is worth one one week's work of a person's job. Yeah, you could probably interpret that. You could probably stretch it. But if you want to use that as a rule of thumb, I don't think you're going to get any benefit out of it, to be honest with you. Uh, because as people estimate stuff higher up, doesn't mean that's how much work it's going to take to really get the job done. Because you'll find things as you go. So come the third, fourth sprint, you're starting to size things. You're getting a, maybe you're still doing just, just counts, right? Just trying to get an idea for counts. Because here's the thing. Once they see that you can vary in counts, maybe you get a lot of stuff done. Maybe you want to get a few stuff done and you see this zigzag. That's a great opportunity to introduce sizing. So, you know, if we did sizing and they had really simple things and they were lower points, and if you had more complicated things, they were higher points, you wouldn't have, you shouldn't have that bouncing around anymore because now you're given an idea. Is it hard? Is it difficult? But the harder ones get more points and the easy ones get less points. So it becomes more stable when you, when you, when you chart this and report out. And plus it's, it's, it's much nicer to give those estimates to others um, or have them go into your estimates and say, oh, we're going to do 10 things. Oh, we're going to do 20 things. Well, why did you say you're going to do 20 things this sprint and you did 10 last one or you did 20 last sprint and why are you going to do 10? You're going to get those questions. So that's what I think the points really come in handy a lot when people start questioning and they will. I'm sorry. They do. It's the nature of the beast. So, so I gave you the intro. That's the first couple of weeks. And there's other metrics you can do. Now, why not do all the metrics at once? Why not do cumulative flow? Why not do points? Why not do issue count? Why not do time and, and column? Why not? There, there's so many metrics out there that you can come up. Why not do them all at once? And the reason being is it's too much. And it may be overkill. And it's more admin work or more distractions than you need. For example, when I was teaching students, started teaching it. Um, I think in the Fox. No, we're still just got to have a video. Okay, this is the the beauty of doing live. You lose the video every once in a while. Um. So when I was teaching the students. I didn't want to put all the metrics on them at once. I only use them if they need them. Like they were doing fine, but then I, I noticed they weren't, they were all over the place. They started running around, not quite well. Some did run around the room. I added a metric like, okay, we're, we're going to count how many 10 things they did or count how many homeworks they did. I added that into their grading system because they needed a little bit of checkpoint because they're all over the place, but I didn't need to add it at front. I wanted to see what this the, the class would do and achieve. And then as I achieved or did not achieve was in the case of the classroom, then I added the metrics in some little stick in a little hammer there saying, Hey, if you want to, if you want to get an A, here's what you got to do to get an A just to give some boundaries to things. Because it was kind of like, oh, I can do whatever I want. Well, no, we got, I need you, I need you, and I want you to learn some new things, and it can't be just a free for all and then distracting all the other students who want to learn. So, same thing with the scrum team. You don't need to add everything at once, add them as they go. Like I said, if it seems like their, their counts are all over the place, then add points. If it seems like they're pretty good at, what they're doing that counts or i'll even add this if they get everything done that they need to do in the sprint then you don't need the metrics per se right you don't need to know what is your estimates for being done or whatever if they're getting everything done delivering product you may not need and here's the win right you may not need the metrics at all you know if teams are delivering everything I'm going to tell you right now, the business isn't going to care about the metrics or what's predicted. Because if you're delivering what they're asking for, they're going to be happy. They're not going to, going to come down and ask you what your metrics are or anything like that. Neither were management. So, so if we're delivering, we don't need it. But if we're not delivering and we make a lot of promises, 
Then you got to start saying, okay, we're over promising. We're not delivering everything. What can we do to improve that? One, you start looking, let's look at the number of things we do. Let's count that. If it looks like it's all over the place because there's some hard stuff, there's some easy stuff, it's a lot of variety, then you throw in sizing. If the variety is the same, then you don't need sizing. It all depends on what is being worked. Is it really complex? Maybe you do need sizing. If it's not as complex to work, then you don't need sizing, right? So you, you think about what can help the team deliver and help convey a better message with the metrics to everyone outside and to themselves, right? Some people think they know everything, but they don't. Anyway, so that's just an example why you don't need to put all the metrics in. You, you assess a team, see how they're doing, what would help them deliver and look good for everyone else outside? What would help them improve their estimating, their commitments, what they're doing, you know, if there's stuff sitting in test maybe you need data to support hiring some more people maybe you don't have enough testers maybe you don't have enough developers maybe you need more dbs who knows maybe you need a ba right the metrics can help support that like if you have a lot of stuff getting through development and then sits in a queue for testing and the testing queue gets bigger a couple things and kanban people in the dev side should come over to the testing side and help test the work it's part of kanban right Maybe, maybe organization is not set up that way. And maybe developers, I'm never going to test. I can't do it. So maybe they need to come out and um, hire more testers by doing the metrics and how much stuff sits in the column or a particular status may help justify hiring more people, right? So the metrics help deliver a message and give some data. Because if you go up and say, we need to hire more testers, well, why? Well, here's my metrics. My metrics show that we're getting this work and we're bottlenecking and it's taking longer to get testing done because we just don't have enough bodies at this time to get all the work that's coming from the developer. We hired all these developers and we got too big on developers and not enough testers to balance out the work and keep the work flowing because maybe that's the way the organization set up first. Everyone can test and everyone can develop, Right. But some people just like to develop testing. Some people like, they, they, they like their thing, right? Well, everyone should be everything, but maybe it's, but you can see there where at first you didn't need it, but as the flow of the work set up, the metrics help support questions or requests for people, training, tools, whatever, because now you can say, I'm going to buy, let's say, an automatic um, software to post the code into production. Well, now you can now you can test that or get some metrics to support your claim. That's what you need to do. So it was a beautiful day today. I wanted to get out early before it got too hot, before everybody came out, except the boys was here. Now he's inside, but he was out playing with the dog, playing catch this morning. So I think the dog's happy because he's got a little kid to throw the ball around with. So I want to wish everyone a great day. Hope you're in this metric Monday. Think about it. You don't need all the metrics at once. Slowly bring them in. Bring them in as it will help the team convey a message that they need to convey and help you convey to bring awareness to the team of what's going on. They may think, oh, we don't have a like, look, look at the bottlenecks. You know, the, the, the flow and the time and the flows and cumulative flows may help with bottlenecks, show you in the bottlenecks. Like it's taken a lot longer to get from this point to this point. Those are the kind of things you do. So I just want to say, take it easy. Don't apply every metric on the planet. The first couple sprints, you're not going to have any data anyhow. And just bring them in as it helps the team get what they need to do. Just don't dump all the metrics on everyone and say, well, here's all our metrics. Use them as they need them, right? With that, I want to wish you a great day. Happy scrumming. Uh, enjoy your Monday. Happy Monday. It's a beautiful day. It's probably going to get hot here on the East Coast. I wanted to come out early. I think it was 100 degrees the other day. So take everyone. Stay cool and enjoy. And we will see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye.